Okay guys, uh, what you need to do in order to make Flappy Bird is first thing you want to do is grab my sprite sheet and you want to create the sprites. So what you want to do is you want to create the Flappy Bird sprite, SPR Flappy Bird. If I go to edit sprite, what you need is four images that look like this. So all it is is if I go in here and double click and I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. This image, the first Flappy Bird image, is with its image uh, wing straight. Okay? And then what I did was I just copied and pasted that. So you could see right here that both of the sprites have the same exact uh, image. The reason why I did that is, see, his wing is straight. And now the next one, if I go ahead and I zoom in, the, um, the wing is flat, right? So on this one, the wing is open or straight. And on this one, the wing is flat. And then there's two of those. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video um, and cut those out. Okay, the next thing you need to do is you need to cut out the pipe. Oh, by the way, make a, if you haven't done so, I made it 14 by 19. For the pipe, I made it 32 width by 300 height. And what I did was I put the center point of the pipe right on the bottom there. See, this is the point. I put it right down there. Okay, so just drag it down there. So if I go to Edit Sprite, it's, uh, it's, it's this. Just cut it out. And then what you do is um, go ahead and cut the top one out. You can pause the video now to do that. Okay. Now what you want to do on the pipe bottom, cut it out, and you want to put the center point right up here. Okay? So uh, again, SPR pipe bottom, 15 by, I mean 32 by 300. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're having trouble getting it to be 300, what you have to do is you have to go to Edit Sprite, you have to go to Transform, and you have to go to Stretch. And what I did is I just made these, uh, I didn't keep the aspect ratio, and I just typed in 32 there and 300 here and hit OK. Like, for example, if I were to type in 400, look what would happen. See? It would be 100 bigger. Okay? I don't want to do that, but <coughs> that's how you do that. Very simple. You could do that in your version of Game Maker as well. Okay, go ahead and cut out the floor. Edit sprite. The floor doesn't matter what the uh, size is really. So that that one's the floor right there. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and do that. The next thing you want to do is the uh, get ready text. You could always take a screenshot of this as well. So I just <coughs> excuse me. Got the get ready text, the uh, tap sprite, and the flappy start. So after you have those three cut out, um, <coughs> you're done. So just go ahead and pause the video and do that if you haven't done so yet. And then, uh <coughs> excuse me, we're going to go ahead and start programming this. Oh, you also need the background. So the background's right there. All right. First things first, let's go to the sprite. OBJ Flappy Bird object. In the create event, you want to set the gravity to 270, I mean direction to 270 and the gravity 0.8. What this does is this points the gravity down and it makes the bird fall at this speed. If you want the bird to fall slower, make this value smaller. For example, 0.5 or 0.2, something smaller than 0.8. If you were to make it larger like 1 or 1 1.5, it would fall a lot faster. Okay. So pause the video and go ahead and do that. The next thing you want to do is you want to put the um, the variable. You want to create a variable called angle down and set the value to zero. Okay. All right. When he collides with the top pipe, uh, what you want to do is for the top pipe when you make the objects for OBJ pipe top and OBJ pipe bottom, just go ahead and parent the top pipe and the bottom pipe to the top pipe. What should we do when we uh, collide with the top pipe? You're going to put go to next room. If you don't want to have um, a you lose room, you could simply just show the high score table here. That's, um, that option would work just fine as well. All right, so how do we get this bird to move? Well, the global left pressed. What do you do? How do you add global left press? You know, add event mouse press global mouse and then you're going to pick global left press and what does it do 
you're going to set the v-speed to negative 8. What does that do? When I globally left press my screen, the bird will jump up negative uh, 8 pixels from where its current location is. This is actually what makes it go up. If I forgot my negative sign and I put a positive 8, what would happen is the bird would jump down, which wouldn't be good. It's not how the game works. Okay, so we have our collision with the pipe, collision with the, I mean, the global left press. Here's where it gets a little tricky, this crazy step event. How does this work? Let me explain what's going on here. If V speed is equal to zero, that means my bird is, let's say it's, it was accelerating up, we click the button and then it stopped for a split second before it starts to drop. That's when V speed is equal to zero. And what I do is I say transform sprite. I put one and one for the scale. Image angle is zero, meaning that he will not be tilted up or down. Now what happens if the uh, V speed is less than negative seven? What that means is I just clicked them, just clicked it. So it's going to be going up real fast. And what should my, and you want the exit event. I'll explain what this does in a second. Okay, so what should my angle be here? Angle 20. So he just goes up. So he's, the bird is going to be basically, um, I'm not going to draw it, but the bird is going to be angling upward really fast. And as the V speed decreases, because the gravity is pulling it down, it's going to flatten out. And then what's going to happen is the, uh, the bird will start to angle downward as it falls. So what this code is doing is this is ensuring that we have our angle properly. Okay? I'm just going to pause the video for a second to give you a demonstration of what's going on. Actually, no I'm not because I don't want to mess this up. So let's keep going. Uh, the exit, the event, the reason why you need this is after it does this if statement, we just want it to break out of the, the event. That's all. We don't want it to basically do this if, like for example, let's say that our V speed was negative 8. That means negative 8 is less than 2, it's less than 5, and it's less than 7. So I don't want that. If it's less than 7, do this and then break. I don't want to do the, all the others. So the reason why we do the break is if a value fits in all these, it's going to work. <coughs> you could use an else there as well, but we're not going to do that. Okay, so what's next? If V speed is less than negative 5, right? So it's V speed, negative 5 less than. This time I want to set the angle to 10. Up here, I set the angle to 20. Here I set the angle to 10, so it'll be half. Okay, go ahead and you can pause the video and do that. I'll keep this up for a second so you can see it. You could pause it here. Okay, you go ahead and pause it here. All right, next thing, if V speed is less than 2, that means it's kind of starting to slow down already. Right? What we want to do is we want to make the angle only 5. So it's not angling upward very much at all now. It's starting to flatten out. Okay? Now this bottom half is going to be if it's great. Now it's falling. From here to here, from all this part, it's falling. So this is obviously going to be negative 5 because now we want it to angle downward. And we want it to angle downward. The angle is negative. So if V speed is greater than 2, angle downward. If V speed is greater than 5, the angle should be negative 10, so it's a little bit larger. So the difference between this one and this one is it's falling a bit faster. How about this one? I'm sure you guessed it. It's now falling even faster. The V speed is really fast now because it's falling with gravity. So what should the angle be here? Negative 25. You could add another one if you wanted the bird to angle down even further, but I didn't do that. Okay, so that's a step event. All this stuff, it's not very much. It just makes the bird angle properly. If you were to leave out the step event, the game would still work perfectly fine. The only thing that would happen is the bird wouldn't angle up and down. Okay? So that's flappy. How about the pipe top? We're going to create H speed. We're actually going to set this at negative 3. What this is going to do is if this is our room, this is a star room, if this is our room, the pipes are going to be drawn out here. And they're going to go this way at a speed of negative 2. And then when they get to here, we're going to draw another one and make it go. And then so on and so forth. We're going to repeat this. Now, how the heck do we do this? Well, we use this step of it. Well, I'm sorry. We do it in a controller. But just know that if x is less than negative 10, you destroy it. 
I'll explain how I actually generated the pipes in a second. Okay, so what are we doing here? If x is less than 10, you destroy the instance of self. And you set the score relative to 1. So what this means is, let's go back to the room so I can explain it, is after the pipe passes Flappy, you're going to destroy the pipe and reward Flappy a point. That's all that's doing. So this event makes sure that x is less than negative 10, so the pipes are off the screen, and then you give Flappy a point. That's it. Pipe bottom, the only thing you want to do here is redo the step event. Um, the reason why is because if you do, don't do, redo the step event, you'll actually give Flappy two points. You'll give him one for the, uh, a point here, and then since the bottom is parented, it'll point there. So what I had to do is redo the step event uh, and just destroy the bottom pipe. So it's technically the pop, the top pipe is the one that's giving them the points. Okay? Floor, there's nothing in here. All right, here's here's where the magic happens. Okay, we're going to set an alarm to 60, and then you're going to set the variable pipes to zero. Okay. What do we do in the alarm? Let's let's find this out. In the alarm, this is what's drawing the pipes. So here it is. Create the variable position. You're putting random 250. Okay, that's going to create a random number from 1 to 250. If you look at our room, this room, if I go to views here, I actually use views. I say enable the use of views visible when room starts. You guys could go to your tab now and do that. The room is about 250 long, about. So uh, that's why I put 250. And I poured it on the screen to 300 by 600. So I just basically took that area and I zoomed it in. That's all I did. Okay. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, so let's go back to the controller. All right. Now what we're going to do, we're going to set spread to 30. All spread is, is uh, that controls the spread of the pipes. So if you wanted the game to be a little bit easier, you'd make the spread 40 or 50 or whatever. In our case, it's 30. Okay, now th this is where it's a little bit tricky. If the position is less than 80, what that means is if that if the pipe, here's the room, here's the room, so if the pipe is down here somewhere, oh, I'm sorry, up here. You see where how my Y, look at my Y, how this is changing. So if it's up here and it's less than 80, what I did was I made it 80. Because if the pipes are like up here, one of the pipes will be off the screen. I don't want that. So that's how I fixed that. Kind of a hack, but it worked. And now we're going to set if variable position, set variable position to 80. And this one is if the position is greater than 200. So let's look at our room again. And this is 200 right here. So if, it's, if the pipes are greater than 200, meaning if they start here or down here, we just snap it to 200. So that makes the pipes so they won't be drawn off the uh, bottom of the screen. Okay, that's that. We're going to set the variable position to 200. So just know that these two statements right here make the pipe at the top basically not show up too high. And these two statements make the pipes not show up too low. What does this do? Set alarm 0 to 60. This resets the alarm, which allows us to draw two new pipes. And here, obviously, we just create a top pipe. You create it room width. Just means right outside the room. You could have put 300 in here. It's fine. So what room width is, is this. Our room width is this value right here, 146. You could literally type in 146. It does the same thing. All right, and the uh, Y position. This looks a little crazy. It's position minus spread. <coughs> Let me explain what that means. So if I go to my top pipe, it's going to draw this pipe somewhere. And when you subtract the spread, which is 30, it's going to take this point and move it up 30. On the bottom pipe, it's going to take this point up here and move it down 30. So that'll create a 60 pixel gap between the two pipes. If I were to put my position at 20, it would move this one down 20 and the other one up 20, so that would create a 40 gap position. How did I determine what would be good? I just played with the numbers until it was playable. You could change those numbers if you'd like to make it harder. And then you create, a, you create object pipe bottom, 
you make it a room width and you do position plus spread because you want to move the pipe down. Okay. Again, on the top, you subtract the spread because you want to move it up, and on the bottom, you add the spread. And now the draw, what I do is I just draw the value of score at 5090, and I set the color to white. What does this do? This basically just draws our score in the middle of the screen like the Flappy Bird game would. Okay? All right. The only thing you need to do now is go to the, um, go to the, let's see, Flappy Start object and assign the uh, Get Ready and do a global left button and put Go to Next Room. Okay? That's all you need to do. And if you haven't done so yet, you need to make three rooms. You need to make a Start Room with your different sprites. You need to make a room with the actual game. This is the uh, controller. And then you need to make an end room with the lose controller. We haven't gone over the lose controller yet, so let's go ahead and do that. What does this do? Well, if you global left button, this restarts the game. I'm going to add one thing. I'm going to do add event, create. And I'm going to put sleep for a second, just so uh, it doesn't immediately go to the, um, the next room. You could show high score. Actually, I'm not even going to bother doing that. You could show the high score table here if you'd like to in the create event. So what I did was if you press the button, you restart the game, you actually should make a button up. I didn't do this. I just did a global left because I was kind of lazy. But if you make an object up that you click on to restart the game, you could put like uh, a brick that says restart, and when you click on the brick, it restarts the game. And what do you do here? You draw the text. You lose. I drew it at 10 pixels over, 50 pixels down. You can pause the video and go ahead and put that in. I'll put that up, okay. And now we draw the value of the score, 10, 150, and it says your score. Okay. And uh, that's it. That's the whole game. It's pretty simple. And if you go ahead and play it, you can see how bad I am at this game. So you just global click, and there you go. And I lose. I'm horrible at this game. So we'll try again. There you go. I'm on a roll now. And there's my score. I lose score five. Okay? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You've now made Flappy Bird, and you could make millions of dollars as a game programmer.